three, two, one. Hello, friendly listener. You are now tuned in to the Rambling Rogue Show. I am your host, Rambling Rogue, aka Jires Rogue. Thank you for tuning in. We are now in, um, <clears throat> I believe, uh, yeah, episode 17 of the Rambling Rogue Show. So, as always, Give yourself, oh, hold on. Give yourself a round of applause for that. Give yourself a round of applause for helping Rambling Rogue get to episode 17. You know what I'm saying? Without the listener, there is no Rambling Rogue. And even when there's only a little bit of listeners, it doesn't matter. Because you're listening. Okay, you're there. And that's all I want with this show. It's just a place so I could vent. A place so that I could, you know, export anything that I have up in my head. And anything that I feel is interesting that needs to get exported. That's why I do interviews. But yeah, no, episode 17, y'all. It's been a pretty eventful week. I want to kind of run through some of the things that uh, I, I did this week. I just want to run through, because I, I went to a, a quite a few live performances. I mean, one of them was a festival. I mean, one set of them was a festival, right? So, but on Wednesday, right? So this is, uh, it's Monday. You know, April 30th that we're recording this. Mm. A little sip of my water. Ah, I got a sore throat, man. And a sore chest. This is... Anyway. Wednesday of last week, I was in LA. uh, As I am one to try to, you know, try to get more out and exposed into... And, um, I saw Saw Baby! Saw Baby, man! Uh, the 666 God himself, uh, you know what I'm saying? Saw Baby, you know, Atlanta artist who I like very much. He's made a mixtape called Sandas. I've talked about it already on the episode Saw Baby. Mm, Excuse me, Saw Baby talk. But, um... I did get a chance to see Saw Baby, and I ain't gonna lie, man, it was at the Wavy Wednesdays thing that's getting put on by, like, Pink Dolphin, so if you're not familiar, Pink Dolphin is a brand from out here, and if you know anything like Diamond, Street Apparel, or any kind of streetwear brands that are a little bit more mainstream, and a little bit more, like, you know, like, all over the place, syndicated, um... Pink Dolphin is one of those, kind of like Stussy, you know, except that, uh, you know, their store in LA, you know, it's kind of lit. So I guess what they're doing now is some of the dudes that work there or, or I don't, I'm not even quite exactly sure, you know, what's going on, but what they're doing now out there is, is they're doing shows, right? For artists who want to, you know, break in to like the LA scene. So they call it Wavy Wednesdays. And in those shows, they make them free. They're basically just having the artist perform on like a small stage inside of the store, the Pink Dolphin store. So, you know, Saw Baby is one of those artists. And while Saw Baby, you know, technically speaking, he's not the newest artist. You know, he doesn't quite need to be broken per se. He definitely still does need an introduction to a lot of people. And I think that with like the music that he's got coming out soon, I think that uh, will have more of that effect. But anyway, so baby is that artist. And, uh, you know, a lot of people showed up. A lot of people showed up, you know, so baby had wavy Wednesday packed. Um, I, I, I didn't get to see her, but Amber Rose, big old tig old booty self was there. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm sure there were other, you know, famous people. Oh, uh, what's his name? Warhol. He pulled up. Uh, you know, these are LA, you know, Cedric people. So, yeah, it was a lit scene. It was quite a lot of people. You know, we got in there maybe around 6 to 7 o'clock. And, uh, 
We got packed inside of the little tiny pink dolphin store, man. I ain't gonna lie. It got a little bit too packed. A little too packed for the pink dolphin store. And then I think they were ashing blunts. Like, they were not letting people smoke. So, eh. Already, it was kind of whatever. And by and, and this was because, like, they said the show was supposed to start around, like, 7 or whatever like that. And we had pulled up maybe by, like, 6 or something like that. Or maybe even, like, 5-ish. So we're inside, everybody's cool, it's a real packed scene, you know what I'm saying? There's a couple DJs playing sets. Uh, I'm not sure who's playing, and what we were listening, but I, I know that who was supposed to come on was Cam Girl, by way of No Jumper. Now, we didn't actually get to see her, well I did after, but I guess she was supposed to, you know, do a little set before Side Baby. Anyway... You know, a DJ did one set, and while we was in the crowd, and then after that one DJ set, it was maybe like barely 7 o'clock, this man saw baby just appears from the back of the Pink Dolphin store. So it's me and my homie Mike, right? And we're the only two that, you know, that we're, uh, that's who I took to the show or whatever. So we're literally standing there. I'm like, yo, Mike, nigga, I'm in it. Ah! And, you know, we all start going like that. And then T3 came out. I was like, yo, T3, T3. And then uh, that shit was crazy, man. And um, them niggas got on stage. And then he was like, yo, hey. And then I got the Shake Shot Baby's hand. Um, so that was cool. And uh, you know what I'm saying? And then T3, Mike got to speak to T3. My boy Mike. Because um, basically they got on stage, right? Let me tell it like this. And so, you know, they're, you know, they're like looking around and stuff and then they play out Sten and got that, you know, you know, and then, uh, after they play out standing, because honestly, they didn't really need to say anything for that song. That song's new. Everybody's on that shit. So basically, Sababy didn't really need to do much performing. He was kind of just hyping the song up. You know, I couldn't really hear him. His mic. Well, at least I thought at that point, I thought that like. You know, he was playing outstanding. He was just getting turned. He was kind of just moving, doing his thing, kind of just controlling the crowd. He didn't really need to say much. Okay. Then, and he even let 21 Savage's verse play, by the way. But it was during that 21 Savage verse that, because, you know, it's like, it's like if you know the song, it's like, I don't even know how he starts, but he's like, he's like, he's like, Awesome on the ice on my neck, like blank, blank. You know, like he says, he, he just starts it off like he just cuts the whole thing, like 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 the beat just kind of cuts and it like it doesn't cut completely off, but like he kind of just you know his voice is just a very cut, and um also our baby could do with his very dry, very you know just dry just cut voice, you know that just cuts through. All he could do is just these little light ad libs, and it was during that Twenty One Savage verse that I noticed. That Saw Baby's mic was turned all the way down. Either that or homie lost his fucking voice and he couldn't speak. So anyway, the song gets over with and then he starts playing. I think he starts playing uh, maybe like Purple Ape or something like that. I don't, I'm not quite sure what he started playing right after. I, I have I have footage of it. I was I was filming the whole thing. But um, homie just, I don't know, man. His mic, it just didn't. It didn't help. It just didn't work. It didn't. It didn't allow him to do what he was trying to do. There was a little bit of a dis. Not even a little bit. There was a fucking disconnect to the audience. And I'm sorry to say this. I love Saw Baby's music. You know. I know that this is just a start. So right now, you know, of course, everything's not going to be perfect. Everything's not going to be on that prime time level where, oh shit, you know, his mic is going to be like this, and he's going to have auto tune and and all this. No, but man. They did this, man. I don't know if they did it. But then again, like I said, only one DJ came on. It was about three DJs that was set to perform and do a set before Sa Baby came out. And I think Sa Baby had actually come out too early. So I don't know if they had enough time to even properly like get his mic and shit set up. I don't know what the fuck was going on. Because I feel like the only mic that they had was a mic that was ready for the DJs, right? That's a mic that you're going to need to really project on. Like, I, I don't really know too, too much about EQing mics for live shows. I really don't. Like, and, and mixing them right and all that shit. I really don't. <laughs> but 
I do know this. For a live performance to take place, there needs to be some preparation. Going up on stage, while that's like just a cool thing to do and it looks cool, man, as Saw Baby learned, you gotta have that sound check first. Because that show was I just because everybody knew like the words of his song. So, like I said, Saw Baby wasn't really able to be heard, but while that, hey, his songs are lit, so everybody was kind of moving, everybody was kind of dancing, everybody was shaking, everybody was doing their thing, whatever, but. Man, it could have been like 10 times better. Have we actually been able to hear you? Had you actually been able to vocalize? Had you actually been able to... Like, I saw a clip of Saw Baby. He was doing a performance, and it was like... I don't know what where he was, but the performance... You could tell either they did a sound check, or they just had... You know, they was just ready for this nigga. Because you could tell you could actually hear his voice. Like, the crowd could, too. You could tell because it was really going through the speakers. And when he would vocalize, especially because he played Marsupial Superstars, it was the show where, uh, you know, they cut off the lights and then they had the bubble machines going. You could tell. Like, you could really tell that, hey, this was a better show. But at the same time, with that show, too, it was like his performance itself was kind of bad. For this show, it was like a mixture of both. It was like... You know, like, he has energy, but not the most energy, and his songs kind of have that energy, and then it's like, damn, nigga, I can't even hear you. So, saw so Baby on Wavy Wednesday. I'm gonna go to the next Saw Baby show. If there's another Saw Baby show out here, you know, somewhere around, or, you know, in the LA area, in, in OC, something like that, I'm gonna go see it, if it's not, you know, too unreasonable. But... I don't, I don't know. Saw Baby, I'm, I'm sorry, man. That shit, that shit was just... It was just whatever, man. It was just whatever. I honestly had to leave a little early because they even had some mishaps in the show. I don't know what was going on, but T3 didn't even have a mic, so they wanted to play Titan of Boa, which they did, and that shit was actually jumping because that song is jumping, but they had to trade off the mics. Niggas couldn't even have two mics up on the stage. I don't know. That shit was ridiculous, but... Hey, Sa Baby, thank you for coming out, though. I did appreciate the fact that you were there. And he actually shook my hand. You know, T3 was actually being humble on stage or whatever. So that was cool, man. Like, and, hey, I also want to say this. If you're the type of person that thinks that, hey, you can't make it just because you you make music and you're from way over here and, and you got a certain style, man, Sa Baby was talking about pulling his fucking hair out. And I know that it is such a great feeling when you start to see people because he was pulling his hair out because people because his music was trash and like i said that crowd was lit so that's a whole crowd of people that really fuck with his music and and just to see that i know and i can tell that that's a big deal to him and i just hope that he tries to return the favor for his fans and for the people that really fuck with his shit by like you know, maybe coming back to LA and trying to, trying to, you know, trying a little harder for the live performance to be better because I, and I've seen a few clips of his man. It's like, again, his performance will be a little like, and it's not just him, you know, trap artists, Southern dudes, especially dudes that come from these, you know what I'm saying? These backgrounds of not being in the spotlight of specifically speaking, being even like against the spotlight, being away from attention, you know? So I baby talking, I, I, I've watched some interviews on how he used to, uh, you know, like, I guess he had a hustle is what he described it, but you know, Hey, I know these guys aren't the best performers, but when you come back, so baby, I hope like when you see your show, how it goes like that, I hope that that incentivizes you to put out better live performances because your music is great and that's a great thing. But if you don't have that great live show, man, I ain't gonna lie, man. It's like, you, you got to make memories with your music. And that's just an easy way to do it. But, whatever. Uh, what else did we do this week? What else? What else? We have more performances. So, I was at the Smokers Club, everybody. I was at the Smokers Club. I was enjoying myself. Thank you, thank you, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was high. I was having a good time. I was just, I was, I, it was a good time. You know, uh, Smokers Club was lit. I saw quite a few artists, uh, and honestly, 
I got the VIP ticket. That's the only part that I'll say was just terrible. I think I'm done with VIP. Like, yeah, you got the VIP, John, and you kind of cool for that, but fuck VIP. VIP is just shit. It never, ever works out. Like, it's always like they always got a bigger package so that VIP is extra lit for that package. And that package is always out of, the uh, like, my price range. So the normal VIP shit at these concerts, man, they're just trash. They always just give you VIP access to a part of the fucking, like, concert grounds where it's like, it's the same thing. It's just, it's literally actually not. It's the same thing as the other side, the general admission. It's literally the same unless you have, like, the extra, extra VIP you know, like, or media shit, but, hey, Smokers Club, lit, super lit, um, it was super, 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 super fun, first show that I was able to catch was Young Bands, um, I'm not too big of a fan of, 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 of Bands, you know, Bands is new, he's on the come up, but after seeing his live show, flex it, yeah, that shit was hard, yeah, he did his thing, man. Um, so, uh, young bands, he really got out. He had good crowd control. I'm probably gonna be putting out a video soon of like all these concerts and shit. And his concert is probably gonna be one that I really, you know, like put a lot of uh uh footage out on because man, yeah, he really knew how to control that shit. Like he, you, you could tell he a young superstar, a real young superstar in the making. He had a white dress. He was doing his thing, man. He did his little crowd surf too, and it was like tasteful. It wasn't like a crazy crowd surf. He actually did a a, a good crowd surf. So you know what I'm saying? Like he 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 did his thing. Young Bands did his thing. His his fans too. His fan like see about a live concert. This is what I love to see. I love to see when I when when fans love to just engage and everybody's just singing yo shit. Like even being in that environment is cool. Like a really fucking great feeling, in fact. But just looking at that is also amazing. So I be looking at that shit and you know Jai is rogue. He want you know he a rapper too. So. I just try to like implement that into my mind when I think, hey, this is how I want to perform. I want that good ass crowd control because when you know you have at least like 50 to about 80 people that just know your shit by heart and you got them people that like when the beat cuts, you gonna, they going to be singing your shit, you lit. Because literally all you got to do is just keep throwing the mic back to like, hey, 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 hey. And then, oh, that shit was great. Young bands, you did your thing. Shit was hard. Shit was really fucking hard. That flexing song, whatever the fuck it's called, hard. And it, it's hard live. Super fucking hard. Um, I got to catch Juicy fucking J on his chippy shit. Chippy. Hey, man. Hey, Juicy is at least 40 fucking five plus. And this nigga is still out here doing it, man. Shout out Chippy Red. Shout out uh, 36 Mafia and all of that. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And that nigga went up. Juicy J went fucking up. His performance is also going to get put up. I mean, I'm sure it's like already a thing that niggas know that he does. But I didn't know that he did this. This nigga gave a fucking 18-year-old, I guess, a lap dance. I mean, not himself, but... <laughs> not himself, of course. But he gave a young fan who was up in the front a fucking lap dance. And Juicy J had that shit lit. All the females there were just, oh my goodness. The females there were just fucking moving to that shit. Like, I, like honestly, that had me a little bit, you know what I'm saying, a little f flustered. Like, I ain't gonna lie. I, I've never really seen ass shake like that and, and just, and just people just move. Like, it, it was a lot of, it was a lot of, it was a lot of, it was a lot of people just really moving. Anyway, Jippy. Yeah, nah, Juicy J show is, yeah, if, if, if you, if you ever would want to just go to really one of the last remnants of that kind of like freak Nick, freak Nick type of like just, just, just wildness, but that's not in the South, like that could just go anywhere, Juicy J gives you that energy, that essence, that vibe, you know, he knows how to just make you feel like you're inside of the club. Like, inside of, I guess, I, I, I don't know, Magic City or whatever the fuck. Like, that shit was crazy. Juicy J had niggas going up. Uh, so, there was Juicy. We running down the list of all the people that we saw. There were more people there 
but we just didn't go see them. Oh, let me say this. While watching the Juicy J show while I was there, I was in the VIP section, and here's one good thing about the VIP at least. Man, celebrities be up in there. And I think I could have met more, but I'm grateful for the two that I met. Shout out to Issa Gold and fucking AK of the underachievers. I shook both of their fucking hands. They're cool as shit. They were just smoking, getting high, just chilling. They had bitches. You know what I'm saying? They was just cool or whatever. Just enjoying the show, real regular shit. And when I looked at them, I was like, and I didn't tell this to them. I wish I could, but I looked at them and I was like, man, this is exactly what it looks like when you know your lane and you could kind of just make your money and just do your shit. They had a show, like, because they, they had a show before I was able to make it to, to the uh to the festival. And their show, I mean, it was like at one o'clock or whatever. They just put out an album. I'm sure it was fucking lit. And it's like they just got, get off the stage and they can just chill and live life. And I'm like, man, that's the dream. Like, that's what I'm trying to be doing. I'm trying to I'm trying to get to this this level of content creation where it's like I'm just going to make my shit and I have my own little fan base. I have my own little like just whatever. And then whenever we cross over, that's cool. But I, if I just support my fan base, I'm fucking good. I'm fucking good and I'm just and I'm just eating. I feel like they're the prime representation of rappers that they've just carved out this lane for themselves and now they can just feed it forever. And and of course, um and and, and I'm talking about for this generation. Like, you know, for other uh genres and other uh you know, even in rap, there are other artists that that are just able to do this like even just outside of the mainstream shit, right? Like Tech 9, you know? Tech Nine is not by any stretch of the imagination mainstream, but when he crossed over, you know, when he when he has a song that bubbles over that that you know like does more attention than usual, that's cool. But you know what he just normally does? Tech Nine just fucking tours off of literally Tech Nine fans. Tech Nine puts out albums, CDs, so that motherfuckers can buy that shit. And I feel like while they don't push all of that in that same kind of way, the underachievers. Flatbush Zombies, who I also got to fucking see, they have kind of carved out that same sort of cult-like fan base where they could just supply them with anything and 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 not with just anything. They're of course coming out with that fire shit, like especially Flatbush. But um, yeah, I fuck with that. I fuck with that essence tough. I don't know if it was by design that they got to that point in their careers, AK and it's a goal, but that's where they're at. They were humble as shit, and they let me, uh, you know, take a nice little, you know, pick of them. I like getting pictures of people, you know, like, like, in states of their lives, especially those two. You know, like, how they looked way back when the Beast Coast movement started, especially AK, is way different to how they fucking look now. Like, even their styles. Issa Gold did not, does, was not dressing like that little bandana wearing little motherfucker, like how he used to be dressing and shit. You know, he was fly, man. He was like, the, man. it's cool to just see people grow. It's, it's, it's fucking cool. So shout out to them. Shout out to the underachievers. Keep making music. That third eye shit. You know what I'm saying? 47 shit. All of that. All of that. Uh, We got to catch. Yeah. Flatbush Zombies, man. <laughs> Flatbush Zombies. They, they did their thing. They they performed off of their new album. That new album. What's that shit called, man? I got that new album. Unfortunately, though, the new album came out. And I only listened to it like twice, man. The first, like, seven songs, the song with Joey on there especially, and, like, that fucking intro, yeah, them shits are crazy. And, like, they perform them shits, too. So, yeah, they, I mean, not the song with Joey, but they perform that intro, they perform, what else did they perform? They performed a few of them fucking bangers. They performed um some old shit, too, at the end. Five of Zombies, when it goes back to talking about that crowd control, them niggas had it stupid fucking dumb. That shit was a jungle. That shit... Niggas was losing their minds inside of that fucking, uh, that pit. <laughs> you could tell Flapper Zombies had that. Meech? Meech is a fucking crowd favorite, bruh. I didn't, I mean, I guess, I guess that's how it is. They knew it too, so that's why they always put him on the end of songs and shit. Like, not on every song. But whenever Meech is closing out a song, that man has the most fucking energy ever. Like, oh my god. That man just be just... 
and he's like at least like a good like six nine. Like that man, st- he's tall as fuck, and that man's knees just be hitting his chest. That nigga be jumping. Like he just was, ah, uh, he was all over the place. He was all over the place, and people in the crowd, bro. When I tell you like dreads were just swinging. Sweat was just in the, just literally just evaporating straight into the fucking air damn near, niggas. You could literally just see the mist. Like, it, yeah, there was smoke, but you could see the mist coming off of the giant just body mass that was the fucking Flatbush Zombies mosh pit. That shit was just raw, just raw energy. And I probably would have jumped in too. I probably would have jumped in too, but you know... I'm not too big of a, again, I'm not the biggest Flatbush Zombies fan, I'm not, you know, I know Palm Trees, I know, I know like, uh, uh, that, what is it called, that, that old ass song, that one where it's like, ooh, 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 ooh. oh, no, that's Palm Trees, they performed another old ass song at the end, from one of the, from, I think from Better Off Dead, but, um, which I think is their best shit, but, um, yeah, Flatbush Zombies had it up, they had shit going up. And I didn't expect that quite too much off of the Beast Coast shit just because, like, I know their shows used to be wild, but I thought that just because of the way rap is right now, I thought that that shit just, eh, it just gets like a whatever. But, mm mm-mm, niggas was going up, like, really up. You know, they were losing their minds to that shit. Mm. (sighs) Another sip of water. Let me run through this list a little bit more. I think we got a few more names left, man. Hey. Earl. Earl. Sweaty. Sweaty, man. Best to bet your bottom dollar on them with a couple niggas. Why it says like there's a lot of options. Hey, man. Earl's show. <sighs> Earl's live show was absolutely terrible. Earl's sweatshirt has great music. Earl's sweatshirt, you know, he, he has great songs. He has songs that he could perform that I think would have the whole entire crowd lit. And if not lit, at least kind of moving to the point where it's like they're not just only able to just sit and stand there. Oh, hold up. Ooh, God, we had some boogies. Woo! If you watching the video version of this, you just saw me wipe off the biggest bugger with my shirt. Yeah, we dirty like that on the Rambling Rogue show. Anyway. Kind of sick. Earl, man. He only plays songs from I Don't Like Shit, I Don't Go Outside. And he only plays unreleased shit. That's it. That's it. And I'm like, my dog, okay, that's cool. But you really, it's it's almost like you're giving us your ass to kiss. And it's like, I fuck with Earl. Like, I really, really fuck with Earl. Honestly, too, I feel like he's one of the best rappers of our time. Like, just technically speaking, the way that he's able to just break down a whole thought and make a metaphor out of so much. Like, he's really just able to to really, you know, figuratively speak in a way that... And in a proficiency, you know, because he, he does do... He has a lot of bars inside of his songs like he'll have a lot of words to say to you you know he he won't he won't you know vocalize or, or do any type of melodies he'll literally just bar you to fucking death until the hook so he has a lot of those songs and that's all that he would perform but he also has songs where it's like it's lit like like he has songs where it's like 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 centurion Right? Centurion, the way that beat drops, like, like, like that, the little sample that comes, like, and then the little drums that, that, that make it build. He could have played pre, like, bruh, pre is fucking, it's crazy. 
But this guy, he starts off the show. I mean, and, and again, I'm grateful for what he did play. His live show was terrible, technically speaking. But if I was to be just listening to that music, had I not been inside of, you know, like, because I actually got into the crowd. So had I actually not been inside of the crowd and just been kind of away, just enjoying the music, or maybe had he done like a show where it was more intimate and it was like a smaller, you know, crowd and it was just, you know, kind of just more chill. That would have been better, but uh, 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 a fucking smokers club and we was in the sun. Niggas is trying to move. Niggas is trying to jump. Niggas is trying to, you know what I'm saying? And Earl actually has those songs, at least a few of them. And you ain't got to make the whole set that you could have at least threw it like a, a centurion. Could have thrown an Earl the song. You could have thrown in a uh, nigga. What else? Bro, there's so many crowd pleasers. Like, he just, he really, he doesn't play those songs at all. And the unreleased shit, man, it'll just, you know Earl's unreleased music. If you're listening to me, you probably know what that sounds like. It is literally just great beats, like fire beats. Like, beats that are just so sample heavy, but they're the probably the best. Like, like honestly, on some Mad Lib level shit. Like, really just noises I've never heard before. And not Mad Lib level, level in the sense that, like, the drum patterns are crazy. But, like, just the, the samples that he gets are just, just wild. Like, just noise I've never heard before. But, I've never heard it before. So how am I supposed to vibe and, and bop out? And then the rhythm to it is not much because it's literally just rap. Like, like rap has rhythm but it's not too much shit that you could like move and groove and dance to you gotta kind of you know what i'm saying do a little something so for earl's show man that was his whole thing it was just him standing there kind of not giving us his ass to kiss no let me rephrase that it was really just him being as earl as possible which is i don't like shit i don't go outside and he looks like that he had a fucking you know little like crew neck on little 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 like just straight stripes or whatever long you know it was long sleeve and it was you know he had pants on and he was just you know just dark colors and it was and his hair's long and he ain't move his hair much and he ain't like vibe or shake his head he's just standing there performing straight up giving you his bars and i'll say this too he cuts out he cuts out his own uh actual song so unlike all these trap rappers and all these other dudes that be performing this shit that that be performing with you know, uh, their song in the background, he don't do that shit, that nigga actually performs and actually raps out the words to you, so, where, where when I was explaining that Saw Baby shit, you know how Saw Baby's mic was low, yeah, Earl's show is not like that at all, Earl's mic, you can hear every word he is pronouncing to you, but that's all you can hear, like, literally, it's that and the beat, and that's it, and it's just, and it's, it's just not the best for, for getting hype, or getting excited, and, you know, like, it's, it, I feel like that could be good in its own merit, you know, again, but it's, like, for that setting, I don't know why he would perform a set like that, like, it's just, like, come on, man, like, you, people really pay so that they can see you perform, and they can see you alive, but right there, I mean, and, and I think it was probably the best thing, he literally, two things, I thought, I thought it was, I thought it was very, it was kind of moving a little bit to me, and I, you know, I really, I wish I could say this to him. I, I almost, I think I'm, I might even tweet this out or something like that. Or maybe get this clipped out and, and tweet this. Because I, 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 I really, I thought this was interesting. You know, he, he performs. He did his whole set. And after the set, I mean, during the set, like towards the last song, because he started to announce that he was about to be done right towards the end. And then like people started walking out, man. People started fucking moving. Like, the real fans and shit, they stayed up, they, you know, they stayed, and there was quite a bit, but people started moving back, man, they was like, they was done with it, like, nigga, this is stupid, we could make it to the next show first, why are we even here? So, it's like, and I could kind of see, like, he was looking at that, he noticed that, he didn't say nothing about it, but I could just kind of tell he noticed that, so when he was done with his last song, you know, he kind of just finished the song, he didn't say any announcements, nothing cool, nothing like that. He turns around, gets a beer, you know, for, with, that was in a cup, and uh, he looks around, turns to the crowd, he waves, he's like, hey, you know, whatever, kind of, you know, just waiting, because I don't know what he thought, 
but it was just it was just the action that he did was so Earl. It was so him. It was so exactly what I expect. He waves, right? And then he kind of just he just shrugs. He's because he looks and nobody's really looking. But at this point, I was trying to get a picture. But he 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 waves. He's like, hey. And then he kind of sees that everybody's kind of running around, like just like just kinda, like they're really rushing to get away. Like nobody's cheering, nobody's saying. Like it, it was it was just bad. It was just a bad reception back, I think. And you know he kind of just shrugs, like he's just like, eh, alright, whatever. And I was like, you know, not to read too deep into it, and maybe I am. I'm about to throw this shirt away, guys. You think I'm gross? Not throw it away, but I'm about to throw it to the hamper. Because I'm about to take a shower. But anyway, he does that. And I thought that that just represented his whole show. Like he was kind of just going, eh, to everybody. And it's like, yeah, that's cool. You know, that's your whole thing. That's your style. But I think when you understand who you are, you know, you really should perform a little more. You should jump up. You should give these people some memories and some moments and shit. That's what I think, man. I don't know. I mean, you're, again, you're not you're not cattle for them to just do what they want with you. But at the same time, it's like, bro, you could have at least, you know, a little some some. I don't know. I still fuck with his music, though. And I know that he's inside of like a really, you know, weird place i don't know if he's still really in that very very weird place you know his dad died and um he was tweeting about it and of course if you know anything about earl you know that his relationship with his dad wasn't quite the best like so you know it's it's affecting him weird this death i can tell you know fans can tell and i don't think that had to do with his show but I think it's things like that. It's just like, all right, I know this is your style, but it's like, come on, man. Fuck all that shit for a second. This is a live show, my nigga. Like, hmm. Anyway. We saw Earl. That was low-key. That, that was on the bucket list. Do we? Would we ever want to see Earl again? I don't know. <sighs> Isaiah Rashad. Now, you see, th from what I just explained last to Isaiah Rashad, see, that's a polar opposite night and day difference there. Isaiah Rashad gave a fucking show. That motherfucker knows how to perform. And let me tell you this uh, he has a lot of songs, man. And I don't know if it was Isaiah Rashad that said this. I think it was, bro. I really do think it was. There was a tweet that I think he put out. I think people were, like, complaining about his live shows. Or maybe it was Vince Staples. It might have been Vince Staples. But I think people were, like, you know, I think it was Vince Staples. But Isaiah Rashad, he put on a show, okay? He was really animate, jumping up, knees in the air, fucking hyping, just he was doing everything. He played, he played, uh, they teased Modest before he came onto the stage. The DJ that was playing all of his stuff, he played Modest, but he they, he didn't actually play Modest. I would have loved that shit. But he played, um, what did he play? He played, Her no, no, no. He played R.I.P. Kevin Miller, which is a classic. He played that one new shit off of his new album that features Kendrick. What's it called? The other one with the hook was like, uh, I was so old, so old myself. Feel like I'm running this. That shit was lit. That shit was lit. Because he even did Kendrick's verse. Super lit. He, uh, what else did he do, bro? He didn't do Shot You Down, bruh. He didn't do Shot You Down. I don't know why he didn't do Shot You Down, but he didn't do Shot You Down. I feel like that would have been a really... But, I mean, maybe it's just, you know, that's the old single. He's kind of tired of doing that shit. But he did Heavenly Father. So that was kind of a slow one, but I love that fucking song. And even though Scissor's not there, you know, he... Isaiah Rashad, he's a great performer because, you know, he would just 
sit down and just, like literally sit down on the stage and whenever there was a part that he really wanted to just stress out and vocalize and really do either he would sit down or he would get all the way up to the front and he would just cut the beat and just do the whole entire part so let's say the second the, the second verse on heavenly father or whatever right like he literally just cuts the beat and he just he just literally just plays it you know and 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 then there was the part i think it's on heavenly father where he's like i smoke too much the problems of a 20 he did that whole shit acapella too he did that like like the whole entire verse man he kept doing that shit and while like okay that was really great for the show and like he's a really great performer i'm not gonna lie some of that shit did have a, like a little bit of a disconnect you know it didn't make it so lit but just to see it though like that's what i'm talking about with earl do a little something extra like yeah earl you are rapping all the words to your songs and even the words to your features he was rap like he played uh that one song with wiki um off of uh i don't like shit on gold side i'm talking about earl and when he played that shit, he did Wiki's verse first. You know, 19, still getting kicked out the crib. But with Isaiah, you know, he's playing damn near all his shit. But he's really giving his, his soul. Earl, he just kind of, he just rapped it straight to you. And like, I don't know, man. He didn't even, like, he, he could use a hype man or something too. But Isaiah, nah, that nigga had the energy. He brought out uh, Earth Gang who I don't listen to much. I have listened to them. I did listen to their big single that came out, but they got the crowd jumping. He brought out that J.I.D. dude. He did. He got the crowd jumping. Um, It was a good fucking show. It was a good fucking show. He did Heavenly Father. He, did, he didn't do Banana. He did not do Banana. He did Menthol. She's so fuckable. And she got the Menthol. Yeah, that shit was hard. That shit was crazy. He did shit off of his new record, though. Sun's tirade. Um Yeah, man. Isaiah Rashad, I really did I, I, I enjoyed his show. I did I, I did enjoy his show. Well let me let me look at this Sun's tirade. Yeah, he did find a topic. He did find a topic for sure. And uh da, 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 da. Yeah, I think that's that that is all he did. But nah man. Well not all, but that's all I could really, really like remember. Like that's shining in my head. Yeah, I fuck with the Isaiah show, though. Isaiah, he performed like a real performer. And it was cool at the end. He was like, man, yeah, we were at TDE. Da, da, da. Shout out Dreamville. Because I guess, I think uh, Earth Gang, I think they're on Dreamville. And he was like, man, if it ain't if it ain't us, it's them. That's it. We running this shit. I was like, yeah, that shit was hard. That shit was hard. Hey, Isaiah, yeah, Isaiah Shaw, man. He put on a good ass show. Good ass show. All right, so we're getting into the last couple people of the night. Last couple people we saw were Mac Miller. Hey, hey, and Cardi. Cardi. Both people that are on my bucket list to see. While I'm not the largest fan of either of them, I do, you know, listen to a good chunk of like a lot of that chunk too but i do listen to a good chunk of both of these artists and i thoroughly enjoyed both shows to a fucking t oh my goodness man mac miller okay so many people wanted to see mac miller and i was in the general admission area and I'm sure probably more people even wanted to see Kid Cudi. So for that, I moved to the VIP. But for Mac, I was in the GA and it was just jumping in there. In the VIP for the shows prior to the Mac Miller show, because these were the last two shows of the night. In the VIP for the for the shows prior, like for the Flatbush Zombie show and all that other stuff, eh, the VIP was kind of whatever. At least what I could see, the GA was really more lit. I was filming, so I really wanted to get some, like, good, you know, you know, you know, film of, like, the crowd really jumping. So, I would go back and forth from GA to VIP, you know, just to kind of see. Whatever. So, I'm in the GA, and it's a constant, constant swirling mosh pit. 
inside of Mac Miller's show. People are falling, people are getting up, people are fucking pushing, you know? But all the while, while his songs are playing, he started off course with Loud. Um, All the while, he, people are just putting their hands up, jumping and shit. That shit was so crazy. Like, oh my God, so many people knew the words to this man's songs. He played Rap Diablo, which was fucking crazy. He played a few more of his old shit that I don't really fuck with too, too much. He played some of his more concert type shit. See, me, the Mac Miller I fuck with, I fuck with Macadelic. I fuck with Faces. I fuck with Good AM. Oh, yeah. He played he played some shit off Good AM. He said, go on the weekend. Yeah, he did his little... Yeah, I fuck with that song, you know? He did the little Anderson Pack song. Woo! Mac Miller had it jumping, man. You know, because Mac Miller... Mac Miller does the singing and the and the harmonizing and and then it's also the shit that gets you jumping and also Kid Cudi but more so I think Mac has more energy with his shit you know what I'm saying like he really has like straight up hype shit so it was like oh man that show was crazy you know the lights were going wild motherfuckers was getting on like you know badass chicks were getting on like shoulders and shit that shit was crazy that shit was crazy I was smoking a blunt. Because I saved, uh, not a blunt, a joint. I saved joints for Max show, Earl show, and Cuddy show. Now for Earl show, I did smoke my joint, and of course, I was able to just smoke it in peace because nothing was happening in that fucking crowd. But Mac, oh my god, that shit was ridiculous. I had to literally keep that shit in my fucking mouth. I was just, I had both hands up, just literally just, just wave, just uh, uh. that shit was crazy. Just swayed left and right, forward, back. Just, oh man, that shit was crazy. It got so hype that like motherfuckers really had to stop everything and be like, yo, stop moshing, stop moving, just stop for two seconds, y'all. Everybody had to stop, like, and he started performing some slow shit. So, like, that was the time, that was like the only time that we were able to actually stand still. But besides that, mm, that shit was just constantly moving, just constantly, just, just, oh my god, so much energy, so much raw fucking energy. And, I mean, you want to talk about just a great performer. I mean, it's, it's, it should, it, it goes without saying. Mac Miller is just, you know, he's prime. You know, he's, 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 he's one of those performers where it's like, yeah, he's mainstream enough to where he has these songs that everybody could just fucking jump to no matter what. And then he has those deeper cuts that the fans could get to. It's a nice balance. It was a great show. He did an hour long show. So did Cuddy. Fucking great shows, man. Cuddy! What can I say about Kid Cuddy's show? I was, uh, my whole body was, like, fucking tingling. Like, during that shit. And why? It's because the bass, uh, at the Smokers Club, you know, the bass at any live show is gonna be fucking crazy. It's gonna be, it's gonna be through the fucking roof. It's gonna be making your entire heart tremble. But... For some, for whatever reason, the bass, you know, I think because I did switch to the VIP area after the Mac Miller show to get to the Cuddy show. And the bass over there with the Cuddy show just added this feeling of immersion to the music. Even though I was in a fat ass crowd of people, it felt like I was really there with Cuddy because Cuddy was giving his fucking heart to this performance. He was really. You could tell. You, he was really, really performing. He played Pursuit of Happiness, Up, Up, and Away, Mr. Rager, Marijuana. He put, Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Cuddy went up. He played shit from Passion Pain, Demon Slaying. He played, he played Day and Night, the fucking Crookers version. Now, I guess that's what Cuddy does. That's a, that's a standard Cuddy set. But, man, that shit jumped. That shit jumped. It jumped more than I expected a Cuddy crowd to jump. I thought a Cuddy crowd was going to be more vibing and it was just going to be, you know. Nah, that shit went up. Cuddy's crowd was a much more vibey, just wavy kind of crowd. Everybody was nice. Everybody was just cool, you know. Like, I was, like, actually saying, like, because the whole sh entire show, the one most important thing about, or, or just one more, one thing that's just very annoying, I should say, about live shows is that people lose their manners. Like, people just forget themselves, and they forget that, hey, 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 we're all people, we all want to see this person, but at the same time, hey, 
we all want to get to the front. So it's like, when people remember their manners, man, that shit just flows way better. And at, at the Cuddy show, everybody was just in good vibes. I was able to easily pass right through the uh, like crowd, try to get closer to the front. I wasn't quite able to get quite to the front, but I got damn very, very close. And, uh, you know, Cuddy even, you know, like just to that good vibes, he even signed somebody's fucking, you know, uh, he signed somebody's vinyl. Homie was in the crowd with a fucking record doing some shit that I honestly should have done. You know, I don't have a Cuddy record, but damn it. Damn it, man. Like that shit was awesome. You know, he played Cuddy's own. He in my mind. Found my, yeah, Cuddy had it up. I was smoking. I smoked a blunt at the Cuddy show. Again, um, you know, it was a wavy show, so I, I could actually have it in my hands and actually, you know what I'm saying? I smoked that shit during marijuana. Woo! <laughs> Some dude next to me was fucking crying. Like, I had to hold that man. I was like, like, we was just, just all singing that shit. That shit was just... <sighs> Cuddy, thank you. And thank you to all the artists that actually performed that I was able to witness, man. You know, thank you to everybody. The Smokers Club really went up. Um, but Cuddy, though, just to end that shit off. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was it was it was proper. It was very proper. He he just he's he's it, man. And his new album that's gonna come out with Kanye. He played Father Stretch My Hands, by the way. Everybody thought Kanye was gonna just come out. We didn't get that lucky. But he played that shit. You know, and that new album that's going to come out, hopefully, you know, it has vibes like that. It has vibes that, hey, that that that, that push us to the future. Because that's what Cuddy has always done. He's influenced so much. Like, I was listening to his lyrics really closely when I was inside of his, uh, like, the in the pit. Like, yes, I've listened to Cuddy's lyrics closely. But some of the shit that he was saying was just, like, really connecting to me. Especially the shit off of uh, Cuddy's own. Like, there's the, off of those verses, I need to re re revisit those verses, man. Cuddy was really talking about really what I'm going through right now a lot. And it just makes me feel a couple things. Scared, and it also makes me feel, like, reassured when I hear Cuddy on those older songs talking about, you know, being a weirdo, but being a, a, a person that's not a weirdo, not just a weirdo, but just a person with passion, a person who wants something so bad and it's all they can ever fix to talk, think about, or even just, you know, just be about. So it's like, I can resonate with that. And it makes me reassured when I hear him talk like that, of course, because it's like, yeah, I get that. But what makes me scared is, is I don't want to just be like, I love, you know, dwelling in my uh, influences, but I don't want to just be copy pasting, you know? And I realized that, that, that my whole struggle of being an artist, being a person that's of passion, you know, seeing how people are different towards you once you become about passion, seeing how people treat you, seeing how people see that, you know, trail, that line of life, that, you know, people, you know, seeing the judgment that you get. I just don't want to be, you know, rehashing all the shit that he said. I just don't want to be the guy who's just re-saying it and, and that's all I'm doing. I want to add something new to the conversation. I want to add a solution. I want to... Something. But that's what I was thinking about while I was listening to that. His lyrics really do resonate with me. And what really kind of shocked me too is that I actually resonated with this before I really even understood some of or even a lot of what he was talking about. You know, I'm, I'm actually kind of, not totally in his shoes, but just as a creator now, I can just understand some of his his pain and some of the things that he's talked about. Because if you know Kid Cudi, you know, similar to Kanye, his struggle has always been just breaking through, or not always, but at least in the beginning at least, it was breaking through what was normal and, and fuck all that gangster shit and fuck all of that, you know, just, it's about honesty and, and, and love and, and, and yeah, maybe having fun and maybe, you know, doing some drugs, but it was about honesty, love, and, and hey, not everybody's perfect. And 
I don't know. I resonate with that. We've been rambling for 50 minutes. 50 fucking minutes here. We've been rambling. Um, Thank you for tuning in. If you tuned in to this point. Quickly, let me just, I guess, I don't know. Update you guys on Crush Chronicles really quick. I did go to see my crush this weekend. I got a chance to go see her on, I think, what was that, Saturday? I had movies from the movie store, so I had to go return them. And I was only in there for a couple minutes. I mean, I've been lightly texting this girl here and there. She doesn't answer back, of course. But like I told you guys, I made her texts a thought hole. So that means that I'm just going to be throwing anything and everything in there. And whether or not she answers is, is irrelevant. But, um... You know, I go in and, and, you know, she's looking fucking amazing. God damn it. And she really gave me pause. And she really made me feel like, 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 like my whole entire being was going to be crushed if I had walked out in that moment when I had saw her. And, and it was starting to chip away my being. It was when I did walk out. I really did not want to leave this girl's presence presence because she she was just she's just glowing and it's not even just her you know appearance she was just wearing like a gown or something like that if I can just you know describe that to you she was wearing a gown with sandals and you know I don't know what you guys know about Jairus Rogi your host but if we can get a little explicit here your host does have a foot fetish he does he does he does if we can get a little explicit, he does. Now, what that means is, is, is when I see feet, pretty looking feet, like this, this uh, kind of feeling just goes over you, man, and it, uh, it kind of, it's very entrancing, it's very distracting, and it's hard to think. And she, she had her feet out, but she didn't even have them painted. Her toes, she ain't have them painted. You know what I'm saying? This girl went out. You know what I'm saying? Rocking the natural, plain Janes. And I, I I loved it even more. So, yeah, uh, that's where we're at. I still really like this chick. I'm still really trying to get to know this chick. And I want to get her out into a situation where I got her on a date. It's been really difficult. I've asked many times for many different kinds of dates. Got very close to getting a, a yes, even... I mean, that's how we started texting, damn it. I mean, I asked her out on a date, gave her my number, and she texted me. But she only texted me to say no. But it is what it is. I'm only really able to see her on the weekends. So, yeah. That's where we're at with that. What else do we got going on in life? Hey, we, got unemplo- we are unemployed. But... We kept our head up. We kept our head up. And um, even though we uh, lost our job, I did, you know, uh, listener. uh, I'm not sure if I want to even explain it, the whole situation, the whole thing that got me to lose my Big Lots job. But we did lose our job at Big Lots. And all I want to say about that is that you should keep your head up. And that you should not worry about what is happening today in this moment right now. Because you can't see what's going to be happening tomorrow. So you better keep your head up. And keep your heart towards what you know. You know what I'm saying? Is about to get you right where you need to be. So that's what I did. I kept my head up. And I I ended up getting an interview. At FedEx. That's a warehouse job. That was what I was kind of trying to avoid for a while. But listener... Got to do what I got to do. <laughs> if the Rambler Rogue show is going to survive and if it's going to get any better, you know what I'm saying? I've got to, I've got to, I've got to, I've got to, I've got to work. So we looking for a warehouse job right now. FedEx is probably, we did do an interview. I think I'm feeling good about FedEx. And uh, once we get our job with FedEx, you know, we're going to be upgrading everything. So if you stay tuned and if you keep watching, you get to have the chance of being able to say that you were up on all of this before anybody, before anything. So take pride in that, listener. That's really all I got to say. Uh, it's Jai's Rogue Rambling Rogue Show. It's been a uh, almost hour long ramble. 
Thank you.